friends. Loving. Laughing. And learning together. Sharing stories one life at a time. So grab a seat. Welcome to Joni Table Talk. Well, we've all heard the old saying, home is where the heart is, but could the home have an even deeper significance? Today, with the help of our special guest, we will reveal how home shapes who we are and learn how to make them a place that will set us up for success. Joining me around the table is my newly married daughter, Rachel Lamb Brown. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> you remember Debbie Titus' stories growing up? I do. And, and I, I would go meet with the ladies mm -hmm. in California and spend a week. Yep. Yep. And you would always come back with fabulous table arrangements and <laughs> home cooked meals. All right. And I have to Girl, say, that's why I got you on the table. I'm still <laughs> learning. Like, I'm still new. I'm still learning. So I'm excited to learn from all of you guys all yeah. your wisdom, passing that down. So then one day, hopefully, I can pass that on. That's to my right. Body. That's right. And you do love detail and beautiful tables I love it. and all of that. So, Cindy Johnston, did you grow up? with you uh, sitting around the table and your kids sitting around the table? We had dinner every night at the table yeah. and no television. Now we have stories. to say not new television, but no phone. We need a bowl <laughs> yeah. for the phone. Okay, I, we're like all eyeing our phones. We actually like, have to talk to each other. We are going to talk about that for sure. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great, thank I remember you. We didn't grow up with a cell phone. No. We had a landline. Mm -hmm. If we wanted a private call, we'd stretch the cord as far around oh, the corner yeah. as we yeah. could without mom hearing. Right? Yeah, and you know, in those days, I don't even remember people calling us during dinner time. I think yeah. people respected that, yeah. and they didn't do that, so it was always a special time. And, and yeah. my honey and I still sit around the table today together. That's great. That's great. Well, my dear friend Debbie Titus is here. Welcome back to the table again. Thank you. It's you like it when you have a table? Here. I love it. <laughs> we have our We're tea, at a table. our hot tea here. Yes. Well, with over over 45 years of experience mentoring and teaching principled living and hospitality, Debbie Titus has shaped generations with her insight and tips. Now she's back with a brand new updated version of her popular book, The Home Experience, and she's here to give us new insight for maximizing the effectiveness of our homes. So why is this important? Why is this your passion? Well, God created the human heart to need love and peace. And there's been a bit of a disconnection and understanding in this generation of how important the home is in order to fulfill love and peace within the human heart. Mm -hmm. So the home is the institution that God created, mm -hmm. not just where the heart is, but it's where the heart is formed. Mm -hmm. That's why the subtitle so is Home Experience, Making Your Home a Place of Love and Peace. Mm -hmm. So when we, uh, there's been a disconnect with women's thoughts or minds or understanding that actually when we're home, we are shaping a human heart to either thrive and succeed or to flounder and fail. Mm -hmm. So when if we can reconnect that what happens at home is important, mm -hmm. it's going to change everything in the life of our relationships. Well, we thought it would be fun to see some of the home experiences, principles, and actions. So we sent Debbie <laughs> along with her daughter and co-author Trina to surprise Amon, one of our producers, who is a working mom, just had a baby, to show how to apply these principles in our daily lives. Take a look. Experience live. Oh. We're your angels. <laughs> Iman, is it okay with you if we come in and quickly bring you an experience to let you know that keeping love and peace through order, meal preparation, it's actually possible for a working mom like you? Okay. Can we I'm, do it? I'm game. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Come <laughs> on in. All right, Miss Debbie, here's my kitchen. It's awesome. Thank you. And remember, we always want to focus on love and peace in our home because that's what every human heart must have. So, order creates peace. That is true. So, <laughs> I'm going to look in your pantry because that's the first place you're going to go, right? Okay, that's when you true. you get ready for a meal. So, uh -huh. we're going to see. Okay, well, 
Congratulations, it's not too bad. Okay. I can see some things that we can change. Okay. So our first principle is we organize it by containing it. Oh. So I brought some containers with me, just in case we needed them. Okay. And then I have turning tables. So we're gonna see how these work with what you have. Okay? All right. So I brought some help. We want to clear everything up. What's really happening? Okay. So Iman, <laughs> <laughs> so, sometimes our mind makes things seem so much bigger than they really are, like cleaning a pantry. Yes. How quickly did we do this? That was actually very fast. Yeah, I'm impressed. Look, and it didn't cost Maybe $12, $15 for Incredible. all the kids. Yeah. You said these are available at the dollar, dollar store? Dollar store. We unified the color. It's bright, it's white. Yeah, it matches and the walls. And yeah, as much as paint. possible. We grouped the sizes. And then we grouped pastas, dries, rices. You had some things already contained, wheat. You can pull them out, see what you have, get it, and then put it right back. So, um, and you know what I notice in your pantry is you cook fresh food. That is very true. You don't have true. a lot of prepared foods, no. and I, I applaud you for that. Thank you. You're feeding your family well. This is phenomenal, Miss Debbie. <laughs> I am just so in awe. It's so beautiful. I feel like when I come home from work and I want to get in there and cook, it makes it so much easier to have it organized. I can see everything, and yes. this is just great. This is really going to bring a lot of peace, as you said. So awesome. thank you so much. Oh, it's I my pleasure. It. All right, didn't you love that? I love this <laughs> little simple. Yeah. Did y'all all get some ideas? Yes. Yeah. So, we yeah. had so I much fun that. that day, I'll tell you. It I was awesome. That. Order brings that. peace. Yes. So talk a little bit, if you will, and I want you all to jump in as well, but the table, let's talk about why the table is so important, why you're so passionate about it. And for those that are watching today, I want you to understand that um, you may work, mom, you may work, dad, you may work, you may have different schedules. It's so important to find a time to come together as a family around the table. Why is that and why is it scriptural? Well, I was so um, just perplexed a bit. I had been speaking in big Christian women's conferences and. The statistics were getting worse with the divorce rates among our families. And so I just said, God, what are we missing? Is there a revelation in the word that can actually strengthen us so we're less vulnerable to disconnecting in our relationships? That's how it started. Mm -hmm. So I had come across academic research that the academia, pro uh, professionals in psychology and sociology say that children are less likely to be on drugs, to experiment with sex if they grow up in families who eat eye to eye, face to face, and have conversation at the table than families who don't. They actually excel more academically if they're with families who sit at a table. And here's what they said. They say something mysterious, almost uh, magical, supernatural happens, but we don't know what happens. So when I read that, I thought, well, let me look biblically and see if there is really an answer in the word. And Joni, I did a biblical study from the beginning to the end, every scripture about the table and discovered a topic I had never heard preached on. Anytime the table would be preached on within a church context, it was always made to center around the ceremony of communion, which came centuries later mm -hmm. through traditional church. And, um, but discovered that God told Moses, I want to change my relationship with man. Up until this time, he was distant from man, and he only appeared through a manifestation, a burning bush, a loud voice from heaven. But I want to connect with man in a more intimate way, and I'm going to bring my presence to this earth. So I want you to build a gathering place. And in that gathering place, he gave specifics in what to build. The second piece of furniture was a table. And when I did a research on that table, the purpose of that table was redemption. That's where mm. the priest did the ceremony. He said, set the table with dishes. And that's what was fascinating to me because sermons and even the sketch in the study Bible didn't have dishes. It made it look like a communion table. Mm -hmm. So religious tradition changed the text of what God said. He said, mm -hmm. set the table with dishes, plates, pitchers, bowls. Some translations said spoons, goblets. Mm -hmm. 
And then the research continued and I discovered that that table that God told Moses to build, so God designed it, was made out of wood with four legs, the same height as the tables that we sit at today. Wow. Now, it wasn't created to have dinner. It was created for the, man, for the sins to be forgiven or the redemption and the purification from man's sin. If we lived at that time, we would buy an animal in order to free ourselves from the oppression of guilt that mm -hmm. sin brings. We would spend our money, buy an animal, bring it to the tabernacle, and the blood from that animal would come to the bread of the presence. And that's what God said to Moses, after you set the table, I want you to put the bread of the presence. So then we went all the way through scripture and saw the miracles that would happen at the table in hearts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you can see from the beginning of time, then the priest would do the purification ritual, go back in behind the veil and um, into the presence of God on my behalf if I lived at that time. This was 3,400 years ago. Mm -hmm. But then we can see at the cross, all of that changed. We're no longer forgiven that way, mm -hmm. but Jesus said it's finished. You no longer have to go through a priest again in order, and that separation of the veil came down, mm -hmm. so the power of God's presence was now available for every human heart. Yes. But when we set the table, according to academic research in our top universities, something supernatural happens in the human heart. I believe it's the bread of the presence because God designed the human soul to, the eye is the entrance to the soul, to the heart, to the emotions, and eye to eye, face to face, positive conversation will weave us uh, more significantly together in our relationships. Well, one strong component to an effective home is the dinner table. Let's take a look at what Debbie and her daughter Trina had to share about how we can freshen up our family table time. Okay, so here is my dining room and my dining room table. Lovely. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect for your family and the high chair for the baby. Yes. So it's important to protect the table, so we want to set the table. You've got a young daughter, so I just grabbed some plastic placemats from the Dollar Tree. Wow. But they're really cute, and they match. Oh, they're so really yeah. cute. I love them. Well, let's just get the table set real quick. Okay. All okay, right. Trina, hold it one minute. Uh -oh. You know what I see? This tall centerpiece is going to have to change okay. because we want eye to eye, face to face. So I'm going to cut it down while you girls get the table set, okay? Wonderful. So let me take that. Okay, good idea. All right, so for your daughter, I have a shorter glass. Okay. And we're using the china because your family's so special, we might as well use this china. We can use china on plastic place mats. So fork always goes on the left, and the kids then are gonna grow up just being really accustomed to a proper table setting. And here's some glasses. Now, cloth napkins for every day, it's not really it's practical. not for weeknights. But you can pretty much be guaranteed there might be a spill or there's gonna be mess, but we want things to be so pretty. So I grabbed these dish oh, towels. Oh my goodness. Also at the Dollar Tree. No and way. Yeah, so if there's a spill, man, you can just clean that up real quick. But I folded them cute. Any napkin fold works for these too. And uh, I have one for the baby. We wanna set his spot so that when he. I love this. Yeah. So you don't have to be getting up to get his yeah. stuff too. Now, this is literally just a dish towel. Okay. And if you want to just fold it in a knot because you don't know how to do a fancy napkin fold, that's perfectly fine. I mean, that's just as cute, right? Oh. Okay. Or maybe just tie a knot in the very end. It's just a knot, so that that's cute too. So just whatever sort of napkin wow. fold you want, but we like to make it extra special. So your table's all set, and mom, the flowers look good. Okay. Now we're ready for dinner. Everybody can sit eye to eye, face to face, have that wonderful conversation encouraging each other. So, are you ready to go to the kitchen, Yvonne? I'm ready. We're gonna cook a quick meal. That's perfect. Okay, let's go. Let's go. You don't always need fancy. That looked great. I love yeah. that. Isn't that awesome? awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's very inexpensive. Everybody can go to the dollar store. There's, I mean, there are lots of little treats. I love that yeah. with the napkin as well. Yes. You know, I think it's also about building community, which is such a core value 
in, in our, you know, in our faith is sitting together, being with one another. I know for me, I'm so busy, you know, I'm at work, and if I don't take the time to have a dinner, then me and Josh that whole day might not have that it's time yes. sitting together, talking together. It might be bedtime before we're actually connecting. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's so important what you're saying. And it's the same with children. It's the only place within yeah. a home that a family, a couple sits 42 inches apart and has a conversation right. if it doesn't happen at the table. But we have 21 meals a week. Let's plan five right. because research says that five mm -hmm. is important. So, you know, I think we should just believe what studies say and do it. And I think we, as women, as keepers of the home, as the one that we carry an amazing responsibility of setting the environment, mm -hmm. that we have to be very intentional. Mm -hmm. And we may say, well, I'm too busy or, or it's gonna be so much work. But if we're intentional in realizing what it will do for our marriage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our children, their yes. future. Yes. It's worth all the hard work. It well, takes. I think we should understand that it's not a trade. Women are being empowered today more than ever before. This is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's absolutely nothing, nothing wrong with this. We're not trying to talk women into, don't be educated, stay home, don't exactly. develop, right. whatever. So if we choose to marry, if mm -hmm. we choose to have children, we choose, God actually in Ephesians 5 says, husband is the head of the wife. Mm -hmm. And Titus 2, you can see where God empowered the woman to have the domestic dominion or the authority over the principalities and powers in the home that want to separate the relationships. Mm -hmm. So we go to work, we come home, and if we understand it, we will prepare. Right. Yes. So Proverbs says she prepares her meat, mm -hmm. she mixes her wine, she also sets her table. So Joni, you're, you've been a working mom. You're here mm -hmm. on a regular schedule, but we prepare when we go home. We, we want to have that time together with our family. I think there's been such a shift in culture, especially with my generation, to exactly what you're talking about. Women think like, oh, I don't wanna be the person that like cooks and cleans and that's all they do. But really it's like you said, it's not a trade. It's not something that um, you have to do. It's something that you get to do to right. serve your family and build that community that we're talking about. Okay. And that's Colossians 3.23. Mm -hmm. Whatever work you do, mm. do it heartily. It means with all of your heart, mm -hmm. not for men, right. but as unto the Lord. And when you do, you will receive the reward of the inheritance. I talk about that um, in the also principle in this book. It's very well defined. Yeah. What is the inheritance? It's faith, obedience, provision, prosperity and intimacy with God. So my question is, is that what you want your children to have? Yes. Right. Yes. Faith, so, obedience, mm -hmm. provision, prosperity, and intimacy with God. So when we look at our work mm -hmm. with a do more attitude instead of a do less attitude, mm -hmm. right. and uh, then, and we do it for the Lord, not right. for anybody to think we're fabulous or great, Right. Um, he rewards our generations. But it's the no attitude question. of the heart that totally. counts here. Totally. And so when you do it with the right attitude, not expecting anything, not yeah. looking for anything, not yeah. waiting for the acclamation of, of men to applaud you, then there is a special blessing yeah. in that for you if you can just understand yeah. that spiritual principle. I was sitting here thinking about all the tables. I mean, of course, when you mentioned about God wanting relationship, I thought about when God went into the tents with Abraham, what did he do? He sat down at a yes. table and he ate. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the marriage supper of the lamb. I think mm -hmm. about the last supper. There's so many examples of tables. So table is very, very yes. important. Um, also, one of the things you talk about in here, if you quickly touch on uh, the honor principle, because I think that's something we've really lost in, in our culture today. And why is that so important? Why is it so important to God? Well, what I'm so excited about with this new edition, mm -hmm. you know, Joni, the Home Experience book is 10 years old from the first edition that I wrote. Most books do not have a 10-year lifetime. Mm -hmm. And we saw sales surging in the last two years. Mm -hmm. And I was running out of my press run, 
and I thought it's time for a new addition for the young millennials. And this time my daughter partnered with me who is an excellent counselor. Um, her insights are phenomenal and she wrote this section and I'm really thrilled about it. My previous book, we just had honoring your husband but we took it and made it a complete section as the honor principle because first we must begin with honoring our father and mother. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you might say to me, well, my mother was not worthy of honor, but no matter what, she wasn't, isn't, or never will be. The scripture says, if you honor your parents, your days will go well with yes. you. Yes. Yes. And so let's start there and always honor your parents and then create an atmosphere of honoring within our home. But I've chosen to be the kind of woman, and it's a choice for me, that I honor other people. That's what humbling yourself is, mm -hmm. is you put someone else above where, who you are or mm -hmm. where you are and lift them up. And of course, honoring your husband, such an important respect oh, and absolutely. honor is the yes. number one need of a man. Absolutely. It's something that Pastor Russell Evans from Plant Shakers, he talks about what you honor is what you get to receive from. Mm -hmm. So you honor somebody with you, your time, you honor someone with a good attitude, then God lets you receive those things in your life. And so honor is huge. Yeah, I just have a passion for a gender appreciation movement yeah. where women honor men. Yes. We're not afraid that if we edify them, build them up. I mean, you know, men in. are being hated today. Men are being hated it's today. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. Like, let's, yes, I mean, sure, we're all about women and, and equality as far as in pay and that kind of stuff, or they do the same job. But I mean, it's gotten to the point to where, I mean, men That's are good. so disrespected, it's so sad. Yes, even in and, our and, culture. and because of that, they are losing their motivation and they're fearful mm -hmm. of what women will say and do to them. Yeah. That's Message. how badly yeah. they need the honor from us. Yes, and you so, know, I was uh, listening to the, what is it called, the... Me Too? Me, me too. too, hashtag Me Too. Yeah, hashtag Me Too, which kind of started out kind of with, I think, a pure motivation, but I heard this women talking on a, on a secular talk show about this, and one of them said, well, what if a man is accused and he's not guilty? Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, we don't care. I know, it's got us wrong. And I was just like, wait, what? Yeah. Did you say that? I mean... It's a snowball out of control. And I don't think is. honoring men it makes you any less of a woman. I don't Not think at all. Women are so about, so about empowering themselves, but I think we're empowered when we do honor. But when and we when put we someone serve. else down, yeah. you're not empowering yourself ever. Right. Ever. ever. For anyway, sure. yeah, the, this honor principle is really mm. big in this book, and it's this is new material that was not in our previous book. It's written by my daughter. It right. is so phenomenal that we have generations now, and that we have a voice and so she, Trina and I actually meet four days, once a month with eight women. It's open to the public. It's called the, the Titus Home Experience. Mm -hmm. And we're the mom for those eight ladies that stay in my home that maybe those moms never had. We tuck them in bed, we rub their, rub their feet, we go yeah. in the hot tub, and I prepare all but two meals in those four days for them. Wonderful. That's awesome. Yes, wow. anyone watching can come. But that's why we've developed this home experience seriously. And the, what I want to see is women honoring men and men respecting women. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Think about this. A five-year-old is a 20-year-old in only 15 years. Mm -hmm. And if we shift, if we fill our home with peace and, and think about this for a moment, God is love, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. The only way to God is through Christ, which means the only way to love is through peace. Mm. And love has no power or no impact on anyone until it's believed. God loved us. He so loved the world that he gave Jesus, but it wasn't until we believed yeah. that God's love is the same in our home. Yeah. You can say, I love you, and then you can turn around and criticize or lose your temper out of control. The person you said, I love you, doesn't believe it. They right. don't believe it. Yeah. So if we establish peace first and get the chaos, the confusion, the disorder, the, dis the strife, if we eliminate that from the atmosphere and then mm -hmm. I serve you 
something mm -hmm. and say, I love you, baby. Mm -hmm. They're gonna believe it, whether it's your children, mm -hmm. your elderly mother, whether your husband, if you're a single, um, the people, the relationships yes. in your life, they're going yeah. to believe it, but they won't believe it unless there's peace. That's good. Well, oftentimes with our busy schedules, dinner can be a real chore. But Debbie has a quick little recipe that is easy to make that your family will love and utilizes some basic staples in the kitchen, proving that you don't have to spend hours over the stove or stockpile specialty item items to serve up a delicious meal. Take a look. I show you how to cook a meal in 15 or 10 minutes. Would that be exciting to you? That'd be a lifesaver. <laughs> and your husband's gonna be happy too, right? Yes, he loves okay. a home-cooked meal. So let's look at the ingredients while that's heating. We have cube steak. Wonderful. We have onion, some red pepper. You can use green, but this is just for color. I thin slice just one carrot. We have our vegetable, our broccoli, and then we're gonna finish off with a fresh tomato. And we're gonna take our beef and put it in our skillet. And we're just gonna saute it. Okay. And then I'm just gonna give a little Asian twist to this by ginger. putting in some ginger. Do Wonderful. you like it? Yes. All right, well, let's do a little ginger. <laughs> yeah. We're going to put in beef broth. Okay. Okay. So when this cooks up just a little bit more and the vegetables are tender, I have taken cornstarch Okay, this is going to thicken the sauce. Okay. If it stays cloudy, you haven't cooked it in good. Okay. Are you ready for dinner? Are we ready? To There's only one thing that's missing. A good cook always tastes to taste for her seasonings. Let me see. <laughs> it's wonderful, actually. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? It's a beautiful day. Okay, so let's plate it. Okay. How long did this take? I don't know. Honestly, it may have wow. been under 20 minutes. You could have done that, huh? Yeah. Do you think you'll do it again? I will absolutely be making Yay. this this week. And there we are. Cooking doesn't have to be difficult. Yes, I can't wait to have family dinner. Iman and Stefan, I've had such a great time. You're a great sport. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I bless you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. And may his presence be with you every time you eat together at the table. He will do miracles in your heart. Thank you again for letting me be part of this experience. Thank, Thank you. you. Did everybody love that? <laughs> Isn't that great? I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Well, we are totally out of time, but I want to thank Debbie for joining us at the table. Remember to pick up the new updated version of the home experience. It's available now, and for more, you can visit her online at DebbieTitus.com. As always, if there's a need in your life, maybe you need God to revolutionize your home or change the atmosphere you're living in, then that's why we have that toll-free number on the screen. Amazing prayer partners standing by. And we can take your call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's why we do what we do. We want to minister to you, encourage you. I hope this has encouraged you today. I'd um, love to hear some of your stories, especially if you try some of the things that we talked about. And let me know how it affects your family, how your kids respond to sitting around the table. Also, you can send your prayer request in by going to daystar.com, clicking on prayer, because we pray over all of the prayer requests that come in. Don't forget to join the conversation online by leaving us a comment on Facebook or Twitter. We'd love to hear your thoughts on today's program. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Love you very much. I love Those you, too. Me. Thank it's you, awesome. ladies. Thank we'll you, see ladies. you next time. Bye-bye for today. This has been a Daystar Television production.